we look at exploration, development, production, processing, and marketing in that order. But if we, if that would be normal for the gold deposit that I mentioned earlier. But if we look at industrial minerals, the, the, the process has got to look much more like that in the box. Exploration. What are the specifications of the material we found? Is there a market for that material that we found? How do, we, how do we develop the process to produce a marketable product? Then let's look at the marketing. Ah, so we have got a spot for this, for this product in the market. We've developed a, a situation where we are sure we can market that, that uh, material. Then go to production, then go, then go to development, then go to production. So that the specifications and the marketing come very early in the process in industrial minerals rather than towards the end in conventional metals mining. So what's important for investors or, or for people looking at project acquisition? Well, the first is uh, undertaking due diligence. Well, that's always an important thing. But in this case, um, particular attention's got to be paid to the industrial minerals, physical and chemical properties in relationship to the specifications that are required to, in order to produce a marketable product. So very early on, you've got to be focused on whether the material that could be mined from this, this project will meet the market specifications. The second, uh, or the second major aspect is, is it, is it in a suitable location to compete in those markets? So the, we're talking about bulk minerals, general, bulk minerals or commodities, dimension stone, etc. So transport is a particularly important aspect and transport costs are particularly important in competition. If you're twice as far from the market as your nearest competitor, then your transport costs are going to be twice as far and your margin's going to be reduced. So if the price comes down a little bit, you're the one that's going to be pushed in the market, not, not the competitor that's nearer at hand. So it's not simply about tons and grade, it's about specifications, processing and marketing are the things that are important for people to look at when they're looking at investment or project acquisition. Technical due diligence or an audit of an industrial minerals project will, will have, as we noted a minute ago, increased emphasis on the <coughs> raw mineral products, properties, the ability of the selected processing route to, to upgrade the raw mineral to a saleable product meeting those specifications, the means of getting it to market and the acceptance by that market. So without those things, it's not really important whether, whether you've got the tons and grade right. Hi. Um, we, we often get um, projects shown to us, uh, people telling us, oh, I have a job report on this and this project, especially industrial minerals. Um, just want to understand um, what is the role of a geologist in preparing this report? What kind of input or extent of comments or opinion do you all normally get involved in? Uh, so that, you know, um, I guess I'm trying to get a sense what kind of comfort are your or, or comment are you putting into the report, and how much reliance can we put on that? So the the essential difference in in uh, uh, reports on industrial minerals and and the other um, base metals and gold reports that you would expect to find in a in a report which supposedly complied with the Jork Code would be the emphasis on the modifying factors in the in the converting the resource to the reserve and hence selling the product. And one of the things that, that, that is important is that, that it's, uh, it's money we're trying to make and the money comes from selling the product and subtracting your, your operating costs. So you need to consider all of these marketing uh, aspects and the specifications very carefully in, in an industrial minerals report. So if you get an industrial minerals report which says to you that we've got um, uh, a kaolin deposit with a chemical composition but it tells you nothing about the particle sizes, then you say to yourself, well, this hasn't addressed all the issues because, I, yes, it might be kaolin, it might have the right chemical composition, but I don't know whether I can sell it into the market and where's the marketing study that, that, uh, that's required. And that's something that you should be doing very early. There is absolutely no point drilling out a kaolin deposit and then finding that you can't sell the kaolin. You need to know at first discovery that you've got, a, you've got a, something that will be a product that will be marketable. So the difference is the emphasis on the, on the, on the specifications of the material that will eventually be sold and the marketing studies and matching 
what you've got with what you need to sell and, and the processing. So processing or specifications, processing and marketing need to be the dominant part of the report for an industrial minerals project in my, my opinion. Can I drill down a little bit further on the marketing report? Um, would you go so far as to say that the company that's going to produce, let's say, marble or granite, almost has to have the marketing collateral already and a few signed contracts from major bathroom contractors or something like that? I mean, is, is that the extent by which you mean marketing? Yeah, I think, I think that's uh, reasonable. I mean, it, you, may not, you may not get to the point of having signed contracts, but if you haven't, there's a significant risk there. So to de-risk the process, if you're looking to raise money to build a plant, then, then you ought to, uh, then for, to give security to the people that are going to invest in that plant, be it investors in an IPO or, or um, people putting money in outside the, the public market, then being assured you've got the market in place is, is important. Right. So in other words, um, just saying the size of the market is X is not good enough. You actually have to have had your customers on the ground, on site, and have to have, have them say, yes, we will sign something in principle even to offtake the material that's going to be produced. Yes, and, and often, often you won't get that to happen unless uh, they've actually had trial parcels of the material that they can actually run it through their plant and say, and say yes, this works. Uh, and so then you're caught in a, in a bit of a cleft stick if you're a new project. Uh, how, do you get, how do you get a representative bulk sample to provide to them? Uh, maybe you've got to build a pilot plant to, to uh, produce that. But, but you're saying that's what we need. That's, what, that's really what you need, yeah.